Hello, everybody. Welcome to All Villa, No Filler. This is a very special one for me because it is my birthday. And I will forgive you for not buying me a present if you just click the subscribe button, if you click like, if you write a comment, get that subscribe button. That can be your birthday present to me. We are on rookie numbers on the channel. We're doing well. We've got, we got a few thousand subscribers on here now because we're chatting Villa. I love meeting fellow Villa fans. But we can. These are rookie numbers, as they say in the Wolf of Wall Street. We can get higher than that. Come on, let's grow this thing. Let's get big so we can keep on doing this podcast. Anyway, well, yes, it is my birthday. I've hit an age where um, you look at Luka Modric and go, I can't believe he's still doing that at that age. I'm probably at the kind of age where were I a professional footballer uh, and of sufficient talent, I might be now out in into Miami. Um, you know, Lionel Messi sends a cross into me and I'm there at the back post, make it 3-0 against Cincinnati and an American commentator will go, uno, stos, adios to Cincinnati. Um, not that I've dreamt this or anything. Uh, so yeah, uh, I like to think that in a parallel universe somewhere, in, in there are infinite versions of ourselves, um, that that is actually happening right this instant. Um, but in this particular incarnation of myself, I am sat here talking about Aston Villa's fixtures. <laughs> it's a lot more exciting, isn't it? Yes, indeedy. Uh, well, well, the fixtures have come out, and, and uh, the Premier League has given me my own. Uh, present my own birthday list. And what have the Premier League given to me? Well, they've given West Ham away on the first day of the season, followed by Arsenal at home. They've given me Newcastle away on Boxing Day. They've given me uh, uh, a Champions League fixture that's surrounded by um, Tottenham and Liverpool away. And they've also given me Tottenham at home and Manchester United away on the last day of the season. Uh, thanks. Thank you to the Premier League for that. And that's um, much appreciated. Right, let, let's get into the... The uh, the meat and drink of it, or whatever you call it. I don't know. Where did that come from? Meat and drink? What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, so, first day of the season, West Ham away. Julon Lopetegui. Uh, uh, another um, top coach. Uh, I believe he's from the Basque region as well. How, how does the Basque region produce so many incredible coaches? Is it Xabi Alonso, Unai Emery, uh, Lopetegui, Mikel Arteta, um, uh, God, the lad, lad at Bournemouth as well. Um, got Iriola. Uh, just, just so many of them. Incredible, incredible uh, part of the world. I'd love to go visit it. Uh, but West Ham away. So Lopetegui. Uh, Unai Emery has faced Lopetegui in the Premier League before. It was Wolves away. We lost 1-0. Uh, that was the season before last. Um, so look, it's always going to be difficult to prepare for West Ham, given the f away, given the fact they have a new manager. West Ham away is a difficult place to go anyway for Villa. We don't usually tend to do that well there, though. We drew one one uh, a couple of months ago. Um, it is just going to be difficult because the the West Ham players are obviously going to be riled up for it. They're going to really want to impress. It's the first day of the season, and um, it's hard to prepare for Lopetegui, just given the fact we don't really know how he's going to set his team up. Uh, with what he has. That said, Aston Villa are going through transition at the moment themselves. It looks like Duran and Douglas Louise are going to go. It looks like Weston McKenney, Eiling Jr. is coming in. Ross Barkley's come in. And July, of course, for both West Ham and Aston Villa is going to be probably quite active. So we're probably going to see quite a lot of movement. So it's very difficult to pre predict how either side are going to line up uh, on the 17th of August at West Ham. Um... It will be easier for Lopetegui because he knows the way uh, Uno Emery likes to set Villa up. But who knows? Maybe Villa will just Villa will just have a, a certain approach that might just have changed from last season, and maybe it catches West Ham a bit cold and got to go into it thinking, look, we're a Champions League team. Why can't we be confident going anywhere? You know, we we went to Arsenal away in April and people didn't back us then, and we won two 0 cost them the title. Uh, and speaking of Arsenal, we got them on the twenty fourth at home. Uh, so the season starts with West Ham away, Arsenal home, and then Leicester away. Uh, quite difficult, that, isn't it? Um, now, I'm going to read you a tweet from John Townley, top journalist from uh, Birmingham Live. Uh, he said, AVFC play at home after each of their first three Champions League fixtures and then away after each of their following three league phase matches. Villa play their fourth Champions League game, either side of trips to Tottenham and Liverpool before the November international break. So... I think the start of the season, it goes West Ham, Arsenal, Leicester away. I think that's actually quite hard. 
But then he goes Everton home, Wolves home, Ipswich away, Man United home, Fulham away, Bournemouth home. I think that run between September and October, is, you know, that's probably where you start to build a bit of momentum, you would think. Uh, and the festive period as well, though we have Man City at home on the 21st, Newcastle away on Boxing Day. My God, can you imagine the hangovers that are going to be present on the 27th for all the Villa fans that travel up to the, uh, Newcastle on uh, Boxing Day? Can you imagine the hangovers that all the Newcastle fans are going to have on Boxing Day as well? Uh, when Aston Villa going to slap the taste out of their mouths. Um, yeah, it's uh, that's going to be, uh, I think, 27th of uh, December is going to be apocalyptic. Uh, it's apocalypse now for hangovers. Um, and then we play Brighton at home on the 29th. But I think December doesn't look as tough. Brentford home, Southampton home, Nottingham Forest away, then City, Newcastle and Brighton home. It's not as tough as last season's looked. But, um, it, you know, it's still arduous. You're still playing a lot of games. We have a significant number of Champions League games and we're going to be playing in the Champions League the top teams on the planet. So, obviously, this is why I said a few weeks ago that I, I think next season it's very difficult to predict because how do we react to um, the challenges that are going to be coming up with that? Uh, Unai Emery's been there, done it. I back these players to to rise to the occasion. But you do just probably have to accept that it is going to be another moment of uh, us learning. And this is still early in the Unai Emery revolution. He's been here a year and a half. Think how long he might be here. You know, he signed his contract now that's been extended all the way to basically the end of the decade. Um, so this is early in the Unai Emery evolution. It's our first experience of the Champions League, you know, in the modern incarnation of it ever. First time we've been in the, the top U European competition for about 40 years. Um, so obviously there are going to be harsh lessons to learn. We've just got to accept that. But at the same time, uh, you know, this team, Unai Emery, always, always react they always prove people wrong they always seem to just you know you get some pundit down there in Essex going yeah well Aston Villa nah they're, 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 they're done titles they're not going to get top four Uno Emery's going to go to Man United or you get you know Gary Neville back in in February that seems to have been totally forgotten about you know Aston Villa I think we had a loss to United the 2-1 and he's like you know um, Villa are done Villa are done they won't get top four it's, this is what happens. It's just, you know, we constantly always, it's like you got the, the so called big six, and then there's all, all this villa. Yeah, well, you know, they're, they're, you know, they'll, they'll be all right, you know. But no, you've got to, you've got to believe that villa can continue to punch above our weight whilst being real, realistic that, yes, there are going to be challenges ahead. You know, we could be playing Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, all these sorts of fixtures coming up. So let's see. My own prediction looking at it is that November's tough. I mean, Tottenham away, Liverpool away, a Champions League game, Crystal Palace at home and Chelsea away. That's bloody tough. Um, my own prediction is with what happens is that because it is transitional in the sense that Douglas Ruiz is leaving, massive player, uh, or looks like he's leaving to Juventus at least, it's not confirmed yet, Weston McKenney, Eileen Jr. look like they're coming to Aston Villa. Ross Barkley's coming. Looks like Jon Duran might be going. Going to be more movement in July. I do wonder if it's going to be a bit of a reverse of last season, where last season we started really well and it sort of became a bit, the form became a bit patchy from around January onwards. I wonder if it would be a bit of a reverse of that and that actually Villa take time to, you know, get used to these new players. We get used to the Champions League and that actually from around December time is when we start to kick on again. And that at the start of the season is us maybe showing a little bit more of that patchy form and getting up to speed with where we are. I still think we can challenge really well next season. Um, and, you know, it's going to be exciting because on the last day of the season, we're at Manchester United away, Old Trafford. It's going to be, you know, an emotional moment seeing a half-empty Old Trafford watching Unai Emery and Ollie Watkins lifting that Premier League trophy. Tyro Mings and John McGinn, the, the completion of their journey at Aston Villa from, from the Championship right through to watching us lift the Premier League trophy at Old Trafford in front of, you know, it'd probably be raining. So the Old Trafford roof... Um, pouring with like the with massive waterfalls coming down onto the United fans who stayed behind, the Aston Villa fans who were there watching us lift that trophy, um, the tears of the United fans, the tears of joy of me and the fellow Aston Villa fans, and those waterfalls falling down from uh, Glazer Tower, uh, where they can't be bothered to invest uh, to fix any of it. Um, 
and instead put it into their little trust funds. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, it's going to be it's going to be an emotional moment. Um, so I can't wait it's seeing Aston Villa win that, tra and then we follow it up by we're lifting the Champions League trophy. Jude Bellingham in tears as he sees Aston Villa take away that trophy. Uh, I'm daring to dream, daring to dream. Look, that's all. Uh, all you can do, isn't it, is dream. So look, yes, the, I mean the big name fixtures are West Ham away first day of the season, uh, Newcastle away uh, on Boxing Day, and then Manchester United away on the final day of the season. Uh, I think November looks tough. I think um, with West Ham as well, it's worth noting, how the hell are we always away on the first day of the season? How do, how does this happen to us all? Do we request it or something? Do we do we literally go to the Premier League? No, just put us away. Can't handle it at home first. I don't want to do it at home, Jay. No, no, thanks. When was the last time we played at home, the last day, first day of the season? I, mean, I, I can't actually bloody remember. I remember we played... Um, West Ham at home in like 2010 and beat them 3 0. Was it J J James Milner's final game? Um, and I remember we played Man City at home. Gabby Bonlahor scored a hat trick, 4 2 win, I think. Am I dreaming this? Um, and then, uh, but otherwise, I, I can't really, can't really remember. It's probably one people are screaming out to me right now, but Wigan? I remember we lost 2 0 to Wigan. Huda Roger Jaeger scored. God, how do I remember this stuff? I need, I need to, I need to prioritize what my brain remembers. I need to remember useful things rather than Hugo Rodriguez scoring a bloody screamer against us in 2011 or whenever it was. Um, but anyway, uh, yes, um, those are the fixtures. Uh, let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe. Uh, please follow us on Spotify. Give us the five star review. So if you like what we do, go on Spotify and just click that five star button. Go on Apple iTunes if you're listening there. Give us that five star review. Um, plenty more to come. I've got a big interview coming out. I know I said it'd be out the other day, but various reasons why I couldn't do it. But big interview coming out in the next day or two. Um, happy birthday to me, I guess. Thank you, Premier League, for giving us like laughably funny fixtures. Uh, United away, Newcastle away, West Ham away. Um, yes, like I say, I, I've got a feeling that second half of the season might be where Villa, we just go on a big old run, kind of similar to what happened when Emery joined us. That's my early wildly stupid prediction let's see how the squad moves in the next month i think optimism might grow with one or two signs we might make in july uh, i'm excited can't wait can't wait for this season bring on the challenges this is what it's about being at the top table you don't want to be you know looking at it dreaming well, you wanted champions league we got champions league that we got to now these tough fixtures that we got coming up this season bring it on bring it up as the rock says just bring it so, uh, yes, let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe. Up the mighty. Good luck.